Ross, how are you doing? I am doing very well. Thank you. And hello, my love, Eric. I love you. I love you, mom. You yeah. didn't eat breakfast. You didn't eat a good breakfast this morning. Yeah. No. Well, he's telling, he's saying that's the most important meal of the day, mom. You know I you're know. eating breakfast. I know. He's All right, so we are ex very excited because I've been trying to get somebody to help me interview Phil Schneider. And I'll tell you, I never heard of him, but I will read the backstory. Uh, okay. Phil Schneider was a geologist and underground construction expert. He was also a man who spent 17 years working on government black projects. That's probably why it's hard to get somebody to interview him. With a level one security clearance, Phil worked at Area 51 S4 and Los Alamos. He is one of the only three survivors from the infamous infamous alien human war at Dulce, New Mexico. That, that was true? And, and well, I'll, I'll keep reading. And the Los, Los Alamos underground areas in August of 1979. Over 60 government employees, uh, I mean, workers and agents were killed during those confrontations. After 13 attempts on his life, Phil Schneider was found dead in Wilsonville, um, Oregon, in his apartment, uh, January 17th, 1996. A long time ago. I know who this is. I've actually channeled him before. Oh, wow. A long time ago. Somebody wanted to know about him. I, I just saw his face and I'm like, yeah, I know who this is. Yes, okay. I, I feel honored to do this for you all. That's awesome. So, you, Eric, did you bring him in? Yep, he's here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Schneider. I don't know, maybe it's Dr. Schneider. Thank you for, uh, I'm sorry you had such a horrible, in parts, life, but it must have been very fascinating. And I'm glad and honored that you're willing to talk to us today. Yes. It, okay. So he's saying to me, thank you for having him. It's an honor to be here. He's very polite. Uh, and he's like, roll with your questions. He's oh, so right. excited Let's... to answer. Uh, <laughs> I just want you all to know what is coming through very strongly. And he wants this to be known. He yeah. had problems, uh, mental issues as well. Okay. Uh, he did suffer with mental health problems and depression. Oh, all right. Well, we'll talk about, uh, we'll get into that. Uh, it probably will come up. Uh, number one, how much of your, uh, of what you uncovered in your whistleblowing was true? And how much was it a ruse, perhaps secondary to mental illness? How much of it was true? Very little was true. Wow. Oh. Did, were you, did you suffer from bipolar disease? Split personality. Oh. Uh, is that different from bipolar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had split personality. Wow. Uh, did this whole thing in 1979, the big, the infamous alien human war at Dulce, New Mexico, did it really happen? No. Okay. How did you die? I mean, first of all, did you really have 13 attempts on your life? Yes, he personally believes that he did have 13 attempts on his life. Yes. And what was the cause of your death ultimately in 1996? Uh, I feel like he overdosed. Oh. Uh, his heart okay. was giving him issues. But even though he leaked this information or, you know, so a lot of it, I feel, is what he's telling me was made up. Yeah. Even though he leaked uh, this information, it scared the heck out of the government. Like it, oh. it just still very frightening to them. Oh yeah. Well, why did you? Was it an intentional overdose? Was it intentional? Yes, that was a good question. Why? What was the last straw that broke the camel's back? He suffered from massive delusions. And he just couldn't control his mental health issues any longer. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That must be difficult. Uh, what is your life lesson and purpose here uh, when, as Phil Schneider? What was it? A disruptor. 
he was oh. here to disrupt and cause mayhem. He's like, it's not a fact that I'm proud of. And I'm like, well, you even, I think you wrote books. He's, he did. He says, yes, I wrote books about it. Um, most of it was quite fiction, uh, fictional. Some of it's true. But he does believe a lot of this stuff did go on. He just wasn't privy to see most of it. Okay, so he says a lot of it's true, but only in his deluded mind. Is that what you're saying? As far as he could perceive, yes. Okay, but now that you're on the other side, you look back and say, oh, that that was just not true. Let's ask, um, do you believe that were some of the, some elements were true? Okay. Some elements were true. Uh, he just didn't really get to see as much as he claimed he did. Oh, okay. Is there any secrets the are there any secrets you knew that you have not or, or have not been allowed to share? Uh, several, several, uh, like what is underneath? I, he's talking about some tunnel, like there's secret equipment and tunnels. Does that make sense? Yeah, I believe it too. Okay. I, I saw a program on Gaia with Dr. Emmett or em Emil Smith. I can't remember his name. Emery Smith, who worked underground and he shared a lot of just amazing stuff. You know, there's a yeah. lot of equipment there. There's a lot of top secret operations going on there. Uh, I feel like there's human experimentation going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of labs. And this is underground. Yeah, Emily, uh, Emery um, Smith said that he was in charge of dissecting. They, they would put a, a piece of tissue or whatever in a little window to, to, for him in his little place. And he would report, do a dissect, do a report. Eventually, it got to be weird stuff like alien parts. Ooh, mm, those are alien parts being. There are some strange phenomena. Um, for lack of a better term, it could be deemed as alien. It was thing. There are things that are unrecognized. Yes. Okay. Uh, what can you share? What things can you share that the you think the public should know now? I mean, of course, you can't share everything, but maybe you could talk about what kind of equipment was uh, doing there, what sort of projects. A lot of microscopic equipment, a lot of chemical testing, um, a lot of dissecting human parts as well uh testing their survival underground uh there's a lot of nasty stuff he's showing me that that's going on he says to me i always had this feeling that it was going on and that's my perception i could just feel it um yeah. but i was also extremely mentally ill but i could really pick up on this energy and that's why he chose to somewhat like be a whistleblower, even though a lot of it was fabricated, but he could just feel that this stuff was going on. Okay, what was the purpose of you coming in as a disruptor? Did Was that supposed to do any good? Uh, yes, it's supposed, that's a good question. Uh, it's supposed to let, you know, people know like what the government is capable of. Okay. They, you're not to trust them. You're not to uh believe everything you see and hear on the surface you yeah. have to really think about what else they're doing um they torture people he's telling me especially prisoners of war they get tortured they're experimented mm -hmm. on and there's so much that we don't know about okay um what was your job there i mean you're a geologist and construction expert so Yes, um, he was studying like substances that were not not really known. So, you know, things that we had not encountered before, possibly new species as well uh, was going on there. Uh, lots of different lab works, testing different uh, stones and things like that. And some of it, we have no idea where it came from. 
But did some was some of it alien? Uh, or yeah, we'll start with that. He believes so. Yes. What about studying a, an alien spacecraft? Was there any uh, thing like that going on? No, uh, not that he was aware of. He does believe it exists. Okay. But what is going on now? And this actually what he's telling me, this will align with some of my um, shows that I've done, some of my recordings. They're clever. Aliens are no longer really bound to use uh, crafts per se, like modern okay. day aliens. They can do a consciousness teleportation, a consciousness transport. They don't have to be in a physical ship anymore. Oh, so like beam me up, Scotty. Yes, yes. Their, their consciousness is so elevated that they could actually go wherever they want to go. So oh, wow. people do see them and they can project themselves as possibly being in some sort of craft. It's how oh. they, you know how they tend to project themselves. But if you could actually reach out and touch that physical craft, you wouldn't be able to, your hand would go right through it. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Have you ever met an alien? Have you ever met an alien? Yes, two. What species were they? What species were they? He's laughing. He's like, they're just out of this world. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Did you meet them in spirit? No, you met them on the earth plane. Yes, he's saying he believes he met them on the earth plane. They came to him in a dream. Oh, okay. Did this give you any messages? And were they benevolent or not benevolent? They seemed very kind. Did they give you any messages? Yes, they told him to go forth with the uh, whistle blowing. Oh, okay. Mm. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So they wanted you to be part of the disclosure, so to speak. Yes, he that was part of his that was his sole contract. Okay. Uh any other things that you can share? Like any projects, equipment, you know, goings on. Yes, there's a, we've got bases all over the world who, as in the government, yes, these government testing bases, they're all over the world. They're in uh, caves, they're in volcanoes, they're under wow. tunnels, uh, lots of stuff going on in the Middle East, apparently, and rocks and, and, and caves there, uh, just lots of experimentation. And he says, don't think for one minute that the government would not experiment on, you know, people that they're at war with. Ugh. Yeah. Right, so what, what are the projects? We know that they're done all over the place, but what kind of experimentation? Um, it could maybe, maybe some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Retro engineering of alien technology. I mean, anything else? They do have a lot of things that they have found that are not accounted for, as in you can't source where they've come from. Okay. But they're scared to label them as alien. It's just as from a, an unknown source. Um, now you know why I never show my face, because not showing my face, I can do, you know, I can do yeah. channel things like this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the reason I never show my face because the kind mm. of work that I do. Um, so I can speak confidently when I, and do these in a confident way. Um, so, yeah, he says that there's all kinds of stuff going on. And he just sent a message. What was that? What are you saying? We need to get prepared for war. What kind of war? What kind of war? I think we're going to be in a standoff. Again, I keep getting this a lot in a standoff with Russia. Oh, okay. How about China? How about China? Uh, they're going to remain quiet. They want to remain out of this for the time being. But if push comes to shove, they will get involved. Okay. 
what have you experienced or know? What do you know before, during, and after your transition? Ooh, that's a good question. What have you experienced before your transition? Well, he's now free from mental illness, he's mm -hmm. saying. Thank and God. that was really, really difficult for him. He had a very difficult life. Uh, it's amazing that he did so well, but he's saying because of his mental illness, he pushed himself, he, he threw himself into his work because that would take away the temporary insanity, right? Yeah, right. And, but it was when he didn't have anything to do, when he had those moments, uh, he really was having like a mental war uh, going on. Now, his transition phase, he said, was very, very beautiful. He was very well received into the spirit world. Oh. He's happy to be there. He does not want to come back down and reincarnate, although <laughs> he will have to. And I'm saying, but next lifetime, will you be free of mental illness? And he said, no, he'll have to experience it again. Oh, Just I know. Read the cliff notes then. Don't come back. Oh, my gosh. All right. Any other atrocities uh, that you, we've already you've already shared some, but there are there any other atrocities that happened that you witnessed that you have not shared but can share? There's a lot of bomb making stuff going on underground as well. Mm. This that's where they do a lot of testing. Um, and I'm saying, well, goodness, with the chemicals being underground, there's no ventilation system. And he's like, that's right. They don't want the, you know, the 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 vapors to be released onto the earth plane. That's how oh. dangerous this stuff is. Oh, God. All right. So, um, like, is it chemical uh, bomb, uh, biological, or just just explosive, or biological? Biological. No wonder then. Mm. Now, have you ever seen any cool, while you were alive, um, ET technology? Like Emory Smith uh, uh, says that this med bed that will scan your body. And if you see it's like beginning of breast cancer, it can completely under destroy the DNA and all the cells. And so it can scan and, and cure just about anything. Did you see anything similar to that or actual actually that? No. No, okay. he hasn't. Did you see any kind of alien technology? Did you see any technology? Yes, he believes that there was a, a sort of light, type of light that they use. Um, was it a light machine? No, it's a calculation. I'm not sure what he means by that. What do you mean it was a calculation? So... They were using complex mathematical calculations to come up with light beams, rays of light, mm -hmm. and those are supposed to have healing properties. Oh, well, that's good. <clears throat> Do you have any past life connected to this lifetime that are sort of similar or, or, or future lives for that matter, which it doesn't look like it's going to happen? Oh, yeah, he does. He's saying um, he's committed suicide in many lifetimes. Mm. And that's something he'll have to try to not do in subsequent lifetimes. Yeah. But he says, I just couldn't take the, the mental anguish anymore. Yeah. Um, he also... His soul family, he's talking very personally, uh, personal now, like oh. his mother, uh, they will always reincarnate together. I do feel like there's a sibling up there somewhere in the spirit world. He's telling me about a sister. So, yes, they, they always reincarnate together and they always tear their hair out with him and every lifetime as well. Oh, boy, I can relate. I could definitely relate. All right, give uh, some ideas for us to get rid of those powers underneath the surface. So I guess they're talking about, I, I'm not sure uh, the powers are, uh, if they're black ops, government people, or or what, probably. Powers from going on underneath the surface. You can't. I don't think you can stop them. 
Even okay. exposing them doesn't stop them. All right. What happened to your family before and after you shared publicly what, what you did share? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. The community always, always has awesome questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what happened to your family before and after? They were scared. They were really frightened. Friends abandoned him. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I feel like he lost a lot of people because of this information coming out. Uh, nobody really wanted to be associated with him. People were scared to approach him. They were scared to talk to him. Then he did have agents, uh, you know, co coming into contact with him, begging him not to release any more information, okay. saying they were going to send him for mental health treatment. He declined. Oh. And, mm. Okay. Were, were any of your family, uh, uh, did they die? Were they were any of them killed? No, but they hid themselves pretty well. Oh, good. Uh, what's the purpose of the project you you've helped with help that shady government? What's the purpose of the, the project? project that you helped? What what was the purpose? I mean, name one project and its purpose, I guess. Uh, well, they were seeing, you know, what type of properties, certainly as far as he was concerned, what types of properties uh, certain substances held? Could he manifest these properties from one thing to another? Um, it's interesting. They were trying to do a lot of experimentation. Um, there was also a lot of construction going on underground. And I feel like a lot of the construction takes place at night. And these places are in the middle of nowhere. Still, but underground or some above ground? I mean, there are some above ground, but the really, you know, sort of black ops stuff is underground. Okay. What was the most common type of construction? Like living quarters, laboratories? There weren't living quarters that he remembers under there. He says um, they're mostly bust in. Oh. Uh, what sort of living quarter? I mean, what sort of lab laboratories? Okay. Uh, just making sure the most important thing is that this information does not escape from the underground bunker, as it were. Oh, okay. Describe the aliens and their we weapons that you have seen. Well, apparently you only met two, but those were in dreams, right? You never met one in real life. No. Uh, did you ever see any alien weapons? He believes that the light manipulation, the light source, the power source is a weapon. So it can be used as a weapon, but also as healing? Can it be used as well? Yes, you can change the frequency and oh, slice yeah. them in half. Okay. Are there any secret openings that can be uh, accessed now? Or is it any way to access into the secret project you have built? No, because it's too dangerous. Okay. Uh, what's your updates and views on a one world government? Do you think it's still working in, uh, working in progress? Oh, that's a good question. What are your updates and views? He says it won't happen. Okay. Is there an alien connection with the global elite, billionaires, Illuminati, et cetera? Is there an alien connection with the global elite, uh, Illuminati, et cetera? No. He okay. says that they, the billionaires have their own like secret projects going on, but oh, yeah. other than that, they're not successful. Okay. Uh, so not with the Illuminati either? Yeah. And I'm not even sure what the Illuminati No. Are. Okay. Are there any particular, oh, this is a weird one, type of people that are considered to be good or bad food sources? So, yeah, like, isn't it true that, uh, well, I mean, there's so many conspiracy theories about Dick Cheney uh, feeding children to the reptilians and weird stuff like that. But so can you say anything about that? Um, are there any people being used as food sources? 
No, no, but let me tell you, um, that is an interesting question because when I was doing a Bob Lazar video, uh, gosh, it was a couple of years ago now. The first thing that was crazy about channeling Bob Lazar, even though he's alive, I was connecting it with him through remote viewing and he had a layer of protection in place and I could not bust through that layer of protection. Ooh, interesting. And that layer of protection was put in place by somebody who had passed in the CIA. So he was very well protected. However, I'm so persistent. I just kept going and going and I busted the barrier. Wow. And we uncovered that there was this, um, this human experimentation going on where they were trying to regrow body parts in the desert. Oh. Um, this is years and years ago. Uh, and those body parts, you know, those people were snatched by the military and they were used to, you know, because they couldn't they couldn't take a, a dead body that's been refrigerated oh, on something yeah. that's really fresh. That is fresh and so, man. yeah. So Bob Lazar was, uh, he was the one that built the chambers to keep the the parts in, but it was a failed experiment. What a waste! How do they choose their people? Uh, they chose like different types of people, young, old. Uh, they had a whole, you know, smorgasbord of of people. Oh, smorgasbord <laughs> you of know people. what I mean? Like, sorry, that that's the well, word. What about he eating any human? Eating of humans or feeding humans to to uh, aliens or rep like reptilians? Is that no? Oh, okay. No. What are the two benevolent alien races? I mean, name two anyway. And are they able to project people from the rest? Uh, oh, sorry, protect people from the rest. Or are they providing any kind of ethical oversight to harvesting? Which is, I guess is what we just talked about. Um, are there any benevolent alien races? He does believe there are a couple. Are there, are there good aliens out there? Yes, but they're like breakaway groups. They're breakaways right? Because aliens are traditionally very dark. Mm -hmm. um, but what he's saying is that there's a couple of breakaways and it's not in human language. Uh, if we were to try to put it in terms of human language, what would you say that their name was? So almost like a receiver, almost like a receiver type of of alien. I'm not sure what that means. What about the tall whites? Would they be an example or the Pleiadians? He's saying, well, it's like, it's like people you have to pick and choose and, and, you know, right. Like even all, alien. all reptilians aren't bad from what I understand. Right. That's true. Okay. What connection does Klaus Schwab have to this alien agenda? If any. I don't know who that is either. I, I know who that is. Uh, oh. Connection is Klaus Schwab. Smarty Pants. No, no, no. It's because I get asked this question a lot. Um, I get asked about him a lot. Uh, okay. What connection does Klaus Schwab have to Alien Agenda? No, he doesn't have any connection to Alien okay. Agenda, according to Schneider. All right. It was reported you were killed and they used your catheter cord to strangle you. Is that true? You said you overdosed, but... Reported that you were killed and that you used your catheter for strangling. No, that's not true. Okay. What was your passing like? I think we already said this uh, when you left your body. It was very beautiful, right? Peaceful. Maybe you want to it go was, into more detail. Yes, yes. It was peaceful. Um, he was glad to leave. It was exactly what he wanted. He had a lot of regrets that he was leaving behind in this lifetime. That one was being uh, being that he could never fix his mental health issue. Yeah. Um, he regretted leaving family and friends behind. I also feel like he left a pet behind. And oh. uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but the transitioning was was beautiful. Well, did you get any help from the a mental health professional? Did you try? He tried to. He's so funny. He said, but I was smarter than they were. So you can manipulate. 
uh, the yeah. psychiatrist, et cetera. Yeah, he was smarter than they were. <laughs> right, and you know, have... mental health has come a long way since, yeah. since then too. You know, there's been a lot more uh, diagnosed uh, disorders and, and things like that. It was yeah. it was quite primitive in its stage, uh, uh, but just, you know, even 20 years ago. Were you on any medication ever? Did you try medication? No, he said he didn't think that it worked, so he wouldn't take the medication. Okay. Do you think it actually, from your perspective now, do you think it would have helped? Do you think it would have helped? Yes, yes, that was a good question. Okay, so maybe next time, if you do come back with mental illness, you'll you'll follow the doctor's orders. Right. <laughs> How many times have you had to say that in your lifetime? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we did that one. Why is our government, and I'm not absolutely sure that this is true, why is our government so hostile towards the extraterrestrials? What, if anything, have they done to harm us? They're scared. They're scared. They know the power of the extraterrestrials. Like, they are very, very powerful beings. We're just a very yeah. minuscule, you know, speck on the earth plane compared compared to the power that they have a lot of tech uh, technology power etc they're much more advanced than, than us in so many ways but it seems like then they would not be nefarious the more spirit the more advanced you are it seems like the more spiritually advanced you'd be right or they not? don't have souls so they're not they they're not bound by that soul spiritual oh, okay whole thing that we are okay uh, how did you get to meet ET? Well, we've already done this. How many ETs have you met? How have you? Oh, so we won't do that one. Have you been on other planets? Have you been Only since he's left the Earth plane. Yes, oh. he has gone to other planets. You know, when you're not in a body, you're free to go wherever you want to go. So, mm. um, yes, he has been to Mars. He's been to Jupiter, Saturn. Uh, he's been to the moon several times. He likes to do a lot of exploration. That's okay. a good question. Have you seen Arcturians in the, in the six Arcturians six dimension? Have you seen Arcturians six dimension? Yes. Now, uh, uh, after you transitioned or before? Before. After. Okay. Uh, do you know what is going on in the Skinwalker Ranch? Sounds familiar. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. I've always wondered that. Do you know what's going on in the Skinwalker Ranch? There's something there, he's telling me. There's definitely some sort of hauntings going on. There's some sort of phenomena going on there. Uh, it's like these beings, they almost like vanish. Uh they show up and they vanish. So they're being projected on the earth plane, uh, but not from the spirit world. Okay. Uh, can you go into more detail? Are we talking about aliens or humans? Are they aliens? He believes that it's possibly being projected by aliens. Have you seen a skinwalker? They're no. creepy. Oh, oh my really? God. Yeah. They're creepy. Okay. Major creep. I heard somebody's voice, like an EVP. We'll we'll look at that point. Okay. Um, if y'all hear something, put it in the comments. It may be just feedback. I don't know. Uh, all right. So I don't understand. So aliens project humans into the skin. I don't understand. No, the it's a it's like a type of. I don't know what these things are. But they're types of beings, or they seem like they're hologram, actually. Oh. But you see, like, shadows of them. It's almost like a haunting, as it were. Uh, but he believes they're being projected by aliens. Oh, oh I, I get it. All right, what? Uh, why are they called skinwalkers? It's just the name that was given to them. They're just very weird-looking... Uh, creatures black uh you know when you see them there's like a black shadowy type of 
thing, but then there's also like different beasts. I don't know. I'm the, I don't ever want to go there. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, what's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of it? Just to keep life mysterious and keep people on the quest for what's out there. Oh, wow. Uh, can you please give the, you're not going to do this, the physical location to the Dulce uh, base entrance. All we know is it's in New Mexico. New Mexico. I was just, he just said that, New Mexico. Is there, is that as, you, outside you Albuquerque. Know, down any more than that, right? Outside Albuquerque. Okay. I think this person probably wants the latitude and longitude, but that's probably not going to happen. So oh, that's, that's, <laughs> no, safe, that's a right? big remote viewing project. No, oh. I mean, you can do that, but it's a huge remote viewing project. Yeah. All right. Is the Salisbury uh, Plains UK a massive D U M B S? I don't even know what that. It's all all caps. The As I happen to live right next to it, and uh, there's so much strange activity out there. Okay, and and what did you say the word was? It's a. I think it's an acronym. Acronym D U M B S. Salisbury Plains UK. Let me look up. Uh, okay, you're looking it up. Um, what do you think is going on there? It's very haunted. Uh, it's oh, definitely deep very underground haunted. military bases. That's what it stands oh, for. Oh, okay. No, but it's very haunted there. Haunted with what? Uh, lots of ancient spirits going on there. Lots okay. and lots of things. Uh, can you uh, go into more detail? Uh, I feel like there was a few wars there. So you still have battles taking place in ghost form. <laughs> wow. Are we talking yeah. about human ghosts? Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else about it before we go to the next question? Uh, It's just a very mysterious uh, place, uh, you know, it really is. Okay, are some of these bases, D-U-M-B-S, built during past civilization or by ETs because of all the ancient stories about human beings be, being saved from catastrophe by going un, uh, underground and story of underground cities? Or were they mostly built by modern humans like militaries? Modern humans, yeah. On Salisbury, there's uh, Stonehenge as well. I, I've been to Stonehenge. Oh, that's cool. that's a very, for those of you that have been to Stonehenge, like the vibration and the frequency and the energy around Stonehenge is really quite amazing. You can tell it's wow. this very ancient place just yeah. within the soul. Cool. Anything else about the DUMBS? Deep underground military bases? There's none there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you have, oh, oh yeah. Do you have any advice how to get ET dis disclosure done? Ooh, good question. Is there any disclosure It's just going to naturally unfold. Okay. Is it? You know, the more and more we're, uh, you know, used to it, it'll just naturally unfold. Okay. Is it a good idea for humanity to start dealing with ETs? No. No. Okay. Why? Because they're so powerful and they're, they're so powerful. Safe. They can be powerful for our good too, right? Uh, you don't want to have to pick your way through the bad to find a good one, oh, you know? That's awful. So what can we do? Your best bet is just to let things naturally unfold. You know, you can telecommunicate with aliens. I mean, yeah. I telepathically communicate with aliens all the time. I mean, a lot of times, once or twice a week, I do a show where I'm channeling different aliens um, to get their perspective on different religious oh. uh, ideologies. Yeah. Very cool. Are there any spaceships that humans can visit? hidden somewhere no strictly off limits okay but
but there are some on the earthly plane or, or yes. underground. Okay. All right, I guess the last one is you said that aliens don't have souls. How do they live? Do they are they from a different source system than than we are, for example? Like source split off into you know into different souls to to be incarnated. And they're from a different source system. They're from a different source system. They're, so how do they they're stay alive without a soul? What keeps them alive? Energy. Energy. They need energy. And how do they get that energy? That's a good question. How do they get that energy? They feed off of whoever they can. A lot of it's just natural energy that they capture. But, you know, if there comes a point in time that that natural energy runs out, they'll use human energy. But energy can't be created nor destroyed. So it's basically you transform it when you tap into it, into something else. Right. They would have Another to point. capture it. They would have to capture it mm -hmm. and they would have to then, you know, transmute it into whatever they need to, to do with it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, anything else you want to share? That's right about the energy. You know, you can't uh, you can't create it or destroy it. You can only transmute it. That that's right. very correct. Yeah, I yeah. actually can see energy. That's um, so cool. I'm I'm very blessed, <laughs> but I yeah, can't. And the first time I saw it, I was sitting at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, wow. and it was like I could feel the vibration going through my legs, and then I saw energy moving throughout the wall, and that's when I was opened up to seeing energy. Yeah, so oftentimes when I'm doing healing, I, I remove energy, and then you have to heal it, transmute it into white light positive energy, which that's very important when you're doing any sort of healing. You try to transmute the energy. Not If you remove it and don't replace the energy back into the being that you're healing with positive white light energy, you're just leaving a hole for more darkness to come in. Oh, yeah. Ooh, not good. I know you don't do that, so that's great. No, no, no. Can I ask you a question, please? Yeah. With your scalar healing, because I'm so fascinated by it, and um, I just want to learn so much about it. I still am learning. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a it's a lifelong learning process. But yeah. so when you so you, are you transmuting the energy within, or is it energy removal? What what exactly are well, you doing? Oh God, the script is so long for the main service. You know, we get rid of we close the portals that need to be closed, like energy tears that were caused by trauma anywhere and in, in the in the life formers and the homes of the land that maybe had really bad mojo happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, fill, fill the voids with love, basically love and light. Um, and the divine team helps me with that. And I use my own maternal love. Like I just feel my love for my children or, or my grandchildren. And I pour that into the, um, into the field because, you know, and I, I also try to get, the person I'm working on subconsciously to, to understand that they are love and they need to love themselves unconditionally because we need the divine team's love, my love and their love to co-create their new realities for the better. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so how do you, so the, the, say the person or the land or that, so that's your target. So you set your intention, right? right. Oh, it okay. takes a lot of focus for a long, long time. It's, it's, a, there's so much to it. There's just a, so many things that we do. Removal wow. of alien implants even and stuff like that. So I'm so impressed with it. I, I just think it's so wonderful. How did you come up with the scripts? Oh, er, with Eric's help, basically. And, oh. and, and my medical knowledge, my medical knowledge is huge behind it. Also, from all the information Eric's shared and others have shared with me over the years since his death, um, you know, just the fact that everything is energy, even matter, which Einstein referred to as frozen light. So I've just learned a lot along the way. And I, you know, it seems to work. It's crazy. It does work. It does. In fact, I'm going to channel Bashar. He's a well-known collective of aliens and very oh. impressed with your work. And it does work. And that's kind of what the alien technology is about. It's about creating an energy field 
it's about this is coming in from an uh, Bashar and oh. your audience will probably know who that is but so it's about creating that energy field promoting that healing within that energy field setting that intention clearing it out properly so it's see it's on par with alien technology that's cool maybe i'm an yeah. alien hybrid who knows all right well thank you that's all i have for you phil thank you so much um this is do you, is there anything else you want to share because you know i don't want people to have any kind of misconceptions about you etc um just he really is a good person and he always had very good intentions he never meant to harm anybody he's saying he says he's sorry if he did cause harm to anyone uh working in that field uh working for the cause and he just he feels you know he feels a lot of regret around that but he really always had good intentions and he is a really good person and the people that you would meet and come across uh that knew him would say the same they just got very frightened of him towards the end mm -hmm. but that you know sometimes that happens with mental illness it becomes so hard to deal with that you alienate for lack yeah. of a better word uh you alienate yourself from from the outside world and i feel like that's what happened here oh. um but you know he sends blessings and love and eric is standing next to him he's like eric's telling him thank you for appearing today and uh you know eric is like the the, the uh the door person you know if you're on the <laughs> list you can come in and eric will let him <laughs> here's in. the red carpet yeah. You a cab. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, thank you, Liz Cross, psychicmedium.com, right? Uh, no, I, li, psychicliscross.com. And don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. Oh, oh, oh. you need right. to, people. Go say it again. Uh, the psychic, uh, psychic Liz Cross is my YouTube channel. There's a lot of good stuff on there. I tell you, I'm so privileged. My interviewers are amazing. And, uh, you know, you're amazing too. And I just appreciate being here. So thank you. Oh, we appreciate you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Eric. I love you. Love you too. And don't forget to eat breakfast, even if it's just something small, you're not eating enough. He says, yeah, I need to, I need to, I think. Oh! I need to be fed too. <laughs> All right. Down girl, down girl. Yes. I love you. Too. Okay. I love you. She is way too affectionate. She's cute. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, her she's a she but her name is sailor it's kind of an androgynous name that that lucas it's lucas's dog he drops and, and another one too drops them off on his way to work so they can play because he doesn't really have much of a yard oh that's and so scout and sailor both girls and his, his little sister annika named both of them all right i will talk to you later thank you so much thank you for having me thank you for agreeing thank to you. this very brave girl bye of course Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Be sure y'all share this and hit the notification bell. All right. I'm going to go eat.